Now, four people have been arrested in connection with the alleged murder of two pupils of the Ben Oxford Academy at Petoy in the Volta region. The Agotime Ziope District Chief Executive, who confirmed the arrest, explained the suspects were picked up to assist the police with information following their claims that two pupils were murdered and did not die of suffocation, as suggested by the police. When the anchor was there, and they even came to my house, uh, and the paramount chief and the other chiefs also came. And I told them they are, they are demanding the, the truth to come out. And they can, the truth can only come out if those leaders are not picked for question. So that is why they were picked. And they were asking why at 2 a. And we're telling them that is a quiet time which the community will not be, you know, misbehaving. So they were not accused people. They just picked them to take words, I mean, the statements from them. In connection with the unlawful demonstration or the alleged. Because they, because they were mentioning the 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 murder is not by suffocation. They are saying that the people were murdered in some uncompleted buildings over there before, during the search, or uh, after the search, the, the boys were brought from the uncompleted uh, building into the cars, mm -hmm. into the car. So they carry out a lot of suspicion, petition, and all that. So we agree that they should be picked, and then the source of their information, you know, brought out, so that the whole thing will be openly seen. Well, we have a family member of one of the DCs joining us on phone, and the police will also join us to give us updates on their investigations. Uh, we'll be speaking to that family member now. Good uh, morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, madam. Thank you for bringing me up on your show. All right. Our condolences once again. Uh, now, four people have been picked up in connection with the death of your family member. Are you satisfied by, these, by this development? Well, um... I am not aware of the pickups. Mm. I'm not aware of it. Okay. So if four people have been picked up, according to my knowledge, mm -hmm. I don't know if it is it's in connection to the murder of my two cousins, but I only I'm only aware of the people that were picked up at Petway pertaining to uh, a certain uh, demonstration that uh, I overheard was carried out over there because of the family members grieving that uh, they really needed the truth and nothing was coming out. Mm. Yeah. Okay, uh, Reverend Samuel uh, Egbari Muta, yeah. your family has been, uh, so to speak, uh, not satisfied with yeah. the investigations by the police so far. And yeah. you also came out here on the same platform to comment on the autopsy report that was yeah. given you. Have you gotten another one? No, actually, I, I went forward to the IGP's office to lodge a, to, to deliver another uh, reminder of, uh, mm -hmm. of uh, the, the petition, and I was attended to very well. And uh, according to the, uh, the administrator who, took, uh, who listened to me in his office, he actually commended that the case should be taken over, should be sent over to the Accra, to Accra for okay. the Accra Police Headquarters to take over the whole case, including forensics and everything. Mm. But uh, when I when I and the family converged together on a meeting, we decided that we need a copy of the post-mortem report, which the uh, Gota Regional Police Command told us earlier on that they had a copy. Then, uh, So when we went to, first of all, we decided to go to the hospital. We went to the hospital with a, uh, a letter from our lawyer uh, asking for a copy of the post-mortem report. 
we submitted a copy to the administrative office, and then we gave a copy to uh, Superintendent uh, Dr. Usa Frie. On giving him the copy, to cut all things short, uh, mm. at the end of the day, we did not get any postmortem report. And okay. uh, with what he was telling us, he was not aware, he could not remember or so, or maybe he had given it to somebody or... With all, all he was saying, we came to a conclusion that the postmortem report was not there or was mm. not ready. So I decided to go back to, uh, and I met with the administrator. He took me to the administrator, took me to the administrator, and we met a 2IC of the police hospital, uh, uh, Superintendent Apia, who uh, took us into his office. And after some discussions, when I complained that I don't really uh, believe in the whole investigation and the whole thing because up till now we don't have a postmortem report all right so uh, do yeah. you still uh, stand by your statement that you are not going to hold any funeral for these two no, until no, we are not holding any funeral until we get a postmortem report and we have decided to go for a re postmortem as well all right, I'll have you hold on because I've got DCOP Francis Doku. Uh, Doku. He is the Deputy Volta Regional uh, Commander uh, on yeah. the phone lines. Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us here on News Desk. Yeah, good morning uh, and morning to your cherished uh, listeners. Wish you a happy Easter. Same to you, sir. Uh, let, we just spoke to a family member of... Uh, the two young boys who died. He says he's not aware uh, that four people have been picked up in connection with the incident. But tell us the progress with investigation. Uh, let me first of all say that that pastor you talk to is not a family member. He is not a family member. Okay. People are even doubting his connection with the community. But that not standing. Hold on. Uh, and he's still on the line. Uh, Reverend Egbari Muta, would you want to respond to that? Uh, DCOP Francis Toku says, you're not a family member, are you? I am a family member, and I have all the papers that prove that I'm a family member. How, do you re um, how are you related to these? Okay, I am a son of a cousin to the Aobo family. All right. Uh, let's get back to DCOP Francis Toku. Um, you were, you were telling us about the progress of investigation, sir. Uh, uh, we were in the office somewhere like the uh, Tuesday with four others. And they have gone to the police hospital. They've gone to see the hospital uh, director and also went ahead to see the superintendent who did the postmortem. Now, according to him, when he got there, he was told that... Uh, they have not done any postmortem. But believe you me, upon further inquiry, the medical director confirmed that the autopsy was done. He invited the pathologist to his office, and I personally spoke to him. I have a recording of all that we said. Now, mm -hmm. his narration, the pathologist's narration was that as soon as the Reverend got there, he started to talk again. Fraud, fraud, fraud. You put my keys. No wonder. Police has lost its respect in the eyes of the public. And so we were also pressing to the medical director that how could somebody enter his office and start discussing them? I think that was not enough. He went ahead and said, No, if he doesn't get the report that day, there was no way he was going to leave the police hospital. Then I said, Sister, there is a process that these things go through. The first report that was issued was initial. The uh, report will be out in the next week or so. This is by the pathologist who conducted the examination. So we all ask and ask why this so-called uh, uh, man of God is behaving this way. This is the first time we are encountering cases like this. All right, but this EOP, with, with the four you've arrested so far, what's the progress with investigation? Yeah, what happened was that last week Tuesday, the youth took the law into their hands Mm -hmm. Without any notification to the police about any public event, they went to the school, chased out the pupils out, uh, out of the school, and the teachers. In the process, some of the children got injured. The doors and windows to the classrooms were also damaged. And as you and I know, there is a public order act at 491, which says that for you to hold a public event, you must notify the police at least five clear days before the event. That was not done. So we think that they have breached, we think directly so, mm. that they have breached the law 
And so we look out for uh, the leaders of the demonstration and we take them. So this, your be, this is not uh, really to aid in investigating the substantive matter, but you, you pick them up because of uh, the fact that they did not consult the police, according to you, before uh, holding this rally or demonstration. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that aside, with, with regards to your investigation on these uh, two boys and how they were murdered, have you made any progress so far? Uh, I don't understand why you say they were murdered. How they were found dead. Well, as we speak, we have not established whether they were murdered by somebody or a group of people. Mm. So we still hold on so to alleg the allegedly murdered. In the, in the, in the taxi. Okay, allegedly murdered. But uh, the family is demanding another autopsy report. Uh, is the police ready to do that? I think I have said time and again that they have the right to go for a second opinion. Mm. The information I have is that the pastor led them to the uh, hospital when they got there. They were murdering thousands of masses. They didn't go ahead to do it. We are any time ready for a second opinion. We will carry them wherever they say out of. Reverend, Reverend Ekbari Muta tells us that he's visited the IGP and they said the matter will be transferred to the Accra police. Uh, you are the deputy commander of the Volta region. Are you aware of that? We are aware he has petitioned the Inspector General of the which is right. We have a copy of the petition and we are only waiting for the IG directive. If they decide that the case should be under the IG process, so they decide that oh, so far. So uh, now the youth in the community are agitating. How do you intend to ensure peace? Well, uh, we've got some of the opinion leaders who are giving us assurance that we're going to fail to hold on mm. uh, peace. And that's, uh, we believe that that is what we want to understand about peace in the community. Thank you very much for your time. DCOP Francis Doku is Deputy uh, Volta Regional Commander of the Ghana Police Service. So finally, uh, Reverend Egbari uh, the, the police uh, is assuring that they are on this matter. Are you convinced? Uh, madam, you see, um, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say until the truth is proven, that is when I'll be convinced. Because all that DCOP was talking about just now, I don't want to aggravate matters or say it is a lie or something, but personally myself, I went to the police hospital to demand for an autopsy report, which is by right what belongs to the family to have a copy. On getting there, what the pathologist was doing was I was in the company of people. I, wasn't, I was not alone. The DCOP was not there. So when everything went the way it was, we, came, we were asked for, to come from there and bring the people who accompany the cops to the hospital with the police CID, proving, one, that the people were not present with the cops mm. when they were doing the, the, the autopsy. Two, that the, the cops were brought there and the autopsy was done there. Three, that we need a copy of the autopsy so that they can be able to know what they will do. And the, the superintendent, Dr. Usafiye, told me something. He said, there is more to this matter than I know. All right, we'll try and figure out that more later when information <laughs> trickles in. Thank you so much for your time. Reverend Samolek Barimuta is a relative uh, of some two young boys who were found dead in a taxi on the premises of the Ben Oxford Academy in Petoy. We'll bring you more details on this matter as and when they are available.